Hey, what are you kids doing? Well, we're inviting people to our church this week. And so other people say, yes, we tie a balloon to the little box. Oh yeah? Tell me about your church. In the eyes of a child, it's simple to invite someone to church. You're just telling them about something you love. Almost everyone has gone to church at some point in their life, whether it's their christening or Sunday school, Easter or Christmas, or even their wedding. Special events just seem more official when they're happening in a church. So it is simple to invite people. Just tell your neighbors, hey, there are really great things happening every week in our church. And you can consider this your official invitation to come back and join us each Sunday. We'll save a seat for you. Anyway, we did have a lot more people we wanted to invite, but we ran out of balloons. <sighs> Do you have any balloons? What do I look like? A balloon delivery guy? Come here, guys. Child blessing is an opportunity to have your child prayed for in the company of other believers. We pray for you to be an example to your children and to teach them wisdom and understanding God's way. We also pray God's blessing and favor over them. Register via info at connectionschurch.co.za. The service time will be allocated upon your registration. Amazing woman, yes, you are an amazing woman. You are invited to join us at God's Wonderland Women's Conference on the 11th of March, 8 a.m. till 12 p.m. at the cost of 100 rand per person. Girls 12 years and older are most welcome. Food vendors will be available. Come join us for a time of worship, rejuvenation, prayer and laughter. Invite your friends. You do not have to be a part of Connections Church to attend. Go to www.connectionschurch.co.za to book and pay online. So we continue with the theme of site development and my sermon title is Make the Dream Real. Hey, okay, are we ready for this? What is a site development plan? It's a plan which reflects the full details of the intended development, including the relative location of existing buildings and structures. Note that I have no idea what I'm talking about. The location of engineering services, access to the land, parking, existing developments and features that will or must be retained, areas for landscaping and any other required information or details as may be determined by a municipality and as may be defined in town planning scheme or land use scheme. See what we're going to be doing soon. Amen. I want you to listen to this write-up by Jane Porter. This is what she says. The law of inertia tells us a body in motion stays in motion. You know when you're not going to fall. It's just, it's just, there's no stopping, okay? 
And the same goes for projects, creative ideas, daily tasks, half-written emails, and that thing you stop working on when you read this article. So when you interrupt a task, it can be difficult to pick it up. How, how many of you struggle with that? That when you stop something, it's so difficult to go back to it. Amen? I know I struggle with that. And we are interrupted nearly every three minutes. If, I don't know about productivity with work, but I'm just saying every three minutes, according to Gloria Mark, a professor of informatics at the University of California, what's telling is that roughly half of those interruptions are self-imposed. We do it to ourselves, okay? And the result, when you're working on something without a clear deadline, seeing it through to its end can be a huge challenge. Amen? So think of all those books you couldn't wait to read, but never actually finished. The projects you giddily started that perturbed or dwindled to a stagnation. None of you go through that, I'm sure. You know, it looked, you guys are so determined. The ideas that never moved into actual conception. Note that everything is meant to be finished, but is not meant to be finished. But many of us have a boatload of projects, books, emails, and to-dos that have been relegated to a kind of purgatory of incompletion. Why does this happen? Nearly a quarter of the adults around the world are chronic procrastinators. Who can identify with the word procrastination? I remember my, and I do it to my kids as well. You're procrastinating. Stop procrastinating. How many times have we said that or maybe heard it? According to research, or oh, you have a problem. You have a problem with procrastination. Research conducted by John Fer uh, Joseph Ferrari, professor of psychology at the DePaul University and author of the book, Still Procrastinating, shame, he must have struggled with it or had an issue with it to be writing this book. The No Regrets Guide to Getting It Done. Okay, so this week I visited a website called procrastinationhelp.com to look for some procrastination humor because it's very heavy, Okay. When I clicked on the link to the best procrastination joke ever, only two words appeared, coming soon. All right. I love watching reality shows. And the one thing I do watch is Restoration Man. I love anything that is restored, and then you see the beauty of what's coming. Amen? So I, I tend to like push the little nubby across the thing so, that, so I can see it quickly. Uh, but it doesn't happen that way. Don't be fooled. Whether it be an old mill or a church or a castle or a barn that they're renovating and restore it, they restore it to something that is of absolute beauty when it actually is done. But many people, I don't think, always count the cost, whether it be financially or the effort, the time, the emotions, the huge sacrifices. Who have you, who have, you um, have, have renovated? And you go, okay, so it's going to be finished in three months' time. Sure. So what happens here is that they're working, some of them actually give up their jobs. The one gives up their job so that they can watch the development, the site, and then the other has to continue working. I think that one's the worst. That one has to continue working and keep with the day-to-day -day activities. These people have small children. Why? Why would you embark on that? Why? So they have small children, they do this, then they, no, no, hold on, it gets better. They proceed to sell their houses off, okay? Then they move to the site. Oh, it's so romantic. Let's go live on the site where there's no water, it's freezing, no, no ablutions, no nothing. So all that kind of thing has to come into play. Then they want to do, no, no, hold on, it gets even better. They want to do it themselves, so they do it themselves and then to a point when they decide, no, 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 they have to call in the experts, okay? Those that, f some people do it to the, with the long, they finish it. They, they go on the long haul. And then the others, they know this is way too much. But those that actually finish and after they, you know, they see their labor and they see what they've done. Man, these places look phenomenal once it's done. So you see, it needs to start with a dream. It needs to start with a dream so the planning can continue and the process can continue and follow 
on. Okay. There's a quote by Israel Moore. He says, you need God's direction before you can prosper in anything you do. However, it takes your choices to begin. It takes your passion to stay on it. And it takes your integrity to finish it well. You know, sometimes we think we can't ask God for success. I think we can ask him for success. I think we can ask him, Lord, help me. Help me to obtain that with your help. But the only way we can really do it is if we trust God, okay? We've got to trust him, especially when we are trusting him with the work that needs to be done, amen? It makes us grateful also for what, when we actually achieve that, that is placed before us. Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, and I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Now, is he a God that he would lie? No. He says, I am certain he who began a good work within you will continue it, his work until it is finally finished. Guys, stop listening to nonsense. Okay? Stop listening to people that say you can't. There is no such thing with Jesus. You are not too old. You are not, no, no, you're not. You can't say that, oh, I've lived my life. I've done that. You can't teach me anything. None of you can say that, eh? None of us can say that, but we do. All right. Nehemiah is a great example of someone who depended on God but still made a plan. Okay, you heard what Israel Moore said as well. It takes our initiative, it takes our planning, it takes, it takes something from us to start this. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king, um, Artaxerxes. And when he heard his hometown, Jerusalem, was in trouble, it was going to be destroyed and it lay defenseless, he decided to go home and rebuild this wall in 52 days. But he knew he would, um, would not get far if he didn't have a plan. There needs to be a plan. You know, we can't go and sit on our stupi and hope. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that can't happen. It can happen. Yeah, let it just happen, Lord. Okay. Build that sand castle for me. You, you build it. No, man. We've got to do something. Amen. So Nehemiah needed the king's permission to go to Jerusalem and he needed support to rebuild this wall. So Nehemiah turned to God and he prayed. And this is what he prayed. Nehemiah 1 verse 11, he says, Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. How many of us have gone through things where we've had to ask God, Lord, please have favor on us. Have favor on us here. Yeah? Have favor on this situation. Have favor on this plan, Lord. Put it um, favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. And God was definitely at work in the king because Nehemiah got everything he needed because he took it to God in prayer. And he didn't say, look what I did. Look at my plan. He said, look at what God did. Okay. He came with a heart of gratitude as well. We've got to come with a heart that says, I have this attitude of gratitude. Thank you, Father. Thank you. It keeps us humble. It keeps us humble and close to God. It's this kind of attitude of gratitude that God wants to develop in our hearts. All right. Here are some statements that jumped out at me from the Procrastinator's Creed. Hear me now. I believe that if anything is worth doing, it would have been done already. I shall never move quickly, never, except to avoid more work or find excuses. Mm. If at first I don't succeed, there's always next year. I shall always decide not to decide, unless, of course, I decide to change my mind. I shall always begin, start, initiate, at least we initiated, and take the first step when I get around to it. Good planning, whether that plan is for your family or whether it's for your work or whether it's for your ministry or diff any different area of your life, there's three parts that we need to put into action. All right, so how do we put this action into 
to, how do we put the plan into action, should I say? Firstly, we've got to take the steps. Yeah, I mean, you can't just be stationary and hope that something's going to happen. We've got to take the steps. We've got to actually move. We've got to do. We've got to plan. We've got to establish our steps, okay? We have to understand where we are now. Where do, where do you want to go from where you are now to where you want to be, okay? And then we've got to count the cost, right? These people from um, that, um, what's that show now that I said I like watching? <laughs> Restoration Man, that's the one. You know that they give up their homes and then they go and live in a, a, a what's it, a caravan or a, one of those camper vans. It's, it's lovely. But they don't count the cost of that they've got small children that could freeze themselves to death. But they have to plan as well. How is this vehicle going to get up to where my property is? They've got to think about that. They've got to think about plans. Maybe this is an historical site that I'm not allowed to make any changes necessarily to the outside of the building. So they've got there's certain things that come into play. Who knows that you just want to like give up? Hey. So I remember doing um, another thing that we need to do, number two, is to set the deadline. Give a date to the step, to each step, okay? A goal is a statement of faith, all right? It is saying, as you plan, you believe that God is, this is what he wants you to accomplish. This is what God wants you to do at a particular date, so I remember doing a course, it was a counseling course, and um, I wanted to give up by that October already. I just didn't, uh, I just didn't want to continue doing it anymore. It was hard work. And then also to top it off, it was like an introspection, which I didn't like. Okay. So by October, I was ready to say, mm -mm. I had two small children. Why would I do this course with two small children? I don't know. Four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, I would have to study for tests, do exams, study for exams and assignments. Any of you have to go through that? Yes, it's hard work, hey? And then to look after your family. Needless to say, God gives me a scripture at the beginning of this course, and it says, he that began a good thing in you will complete it. In his infinite wisdom, such a sense of humor gives me that scripture to stand on. So God will always give you what you need. Amen. All right. And so needless to say, I did finish it. I did complete it. Not with exemplary marks, but I did finish. I completed. That's important is that you complete it. Schedule it. Write those dates into your calendar. Okay. Don't just hide them, write them, put them in your cupboard, Hope for a good day, maybe one day. And then when you start unpacking all the rubbish that you want to try and get rid of, oh, that was a, that was a dream. Yeah, that was lovely. You'll be reminded of that plan. You'll be reminded of when you're going to execute it and when the process will start. Now, when you start the process, the important thing is that we need God's help we need his guidance, we need his wisdom, and we need his direction. Amen. It really makes it so much easier. I know when Pete and I make any kind of planning or do any kind of planning, we always consult God first. We go to him. We don't move on anything unless we're in agreement and unless we have a peace in our heart about anything that we do. Okay. So what needs to be rebuilt in your family? What needs to be rebuilt in your job? What needs to be rebuilt in your community, your city, your nation? Let's ask God for that favor to develop the plan. Amen. And be grateful. Come with a grateful heart, attitude, and watch how God blesses you. Bring it to him. In um, Proverbs 16 verse 3, it says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Hey, isn't it wonderful that God says, I will establish those plans. Bring it to me. Commit it to me. Don't let your life pass by. We can't just live our lives for the sake of living our lives. God places, he deposits a dream in your heart. What are you going to do about that? He's called each and every one of us for a time such as this. 
to do great things now. Okay. And the example that I want to share with you is Abraham's servant. He set a clear goal and then he developed that plan to reach it, but with God's help. As we're walking with Jesus, one thing we need to learn is that God's timing is perfect. Okay. And he's the one that develops the plan. He perfects everything that concerns us. Anything that concerns us, he perfects. His timing is perfect. And his timing will tell us when and how and what. It's good to have plans. And I believe that we should have plans. Yes. We need to have them. We need to pursue them with great boldness and determination. But without God in the picture, it's going to fail. Amen. Which brings me to Psalm 127 verse 1. It says, unless, do you want to say that with me? Unless the Lord, say unless the Lord. Okay. Builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. You want to say that again? Unless the Lord. Protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. Unless God is part of that plan, it will not succeed. Amen. So we can build without God. We can. He's not going to force himself on this situation as our foundation and watch our plans collapse. Or we can choose to let him be in charge and reap the benefits of his perfect timing and blessings. Okay? The application is take the steps, set the deadline, and schedule it. Those are hard, that's hard work. Let me tell you, it's a lot of planning, it's a lot of process. But you know what? God is calling us. He's calling all of us to do great things in his kingdom. Okay? Don't ever feel that you are not called for a now. He's calling you now to do great things. I know he's deposited plans and a dream in your heart. Now it's up to you to move on that. And what are you going to do about it? Would you stand with me? Let's close our eyes and let's put our hands on our hearts. Father, thank you. Thank you that our security, our everything, we say we live for you. You have our all. So Lord, I pray, take our dreams and let it be processed, executed. Take our dreams and do that in our lives. Show us, lead us, guide us with your wisdom and understanding, not our own. We don't want to lean on our own understanding because we're bound to fail. We trust you. We know that you provide. You give us everything we need. And you are concerned about everything that we do and have. Help us to trust you enough to wait for your timing. Thank you for giving us the grace that we need to follow your plan instead of ours. And for the blessings that you have waiting for us. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. That security, that knowing, that grace that you have for us. That favor that you have for us. Not only for us, but maybe for our families. For our children. For our great-grandchildren. For our grandchildren. What have you got a plan? You've got a plan and a purpose. You say you have a plan. And it's not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a future. And that plan is exciting because you are part of it. And we just give you honor and glory for that. You can put your hands down. I'm going to continue praying. Keep your eyes closed. Maybe you here today. And you searching. And Jesus says, I have a plan and a purpose for your life. Today, I'm calling you. And maybe you've been searching for meaning or, or purpose, and you don't know what that is. 
The truth is meaning and purpose can only come from Jesus. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to bless you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Today, today, you can make that decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. This is a decision that starts a journey with Christ. Jesus says in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, John 3, 16. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Today, you can come to him and say, you know what, Lord, I'm gonna, I choose to lay down my life and pick up my cross and follow you. I choose to make you Lord of my life. That means absolute surrender to Jesus. An absolute surrender to walk in the newness of life. So you choose today. If that is you, I want to ask you to be bold enough to right now, you have the choice to make this decision today to follow Jesus. To lift up your hand, I'm going to count to three, and then we're going to pray a prayer with you. We're going to go on this journey with you. You're not going to do it on your own. I'm going to count to three. And if you want this relationship right now, you get to put up your hand. We are not here to embarrass you. Someone will put something in your hand. And then we're going to pray a prayer together. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Right now, if that is you, you get to put up your hand right now. If that is you. Jesus is speaking to you today. He's calling you. Don't, don't hold back. Don't hold back on what God wants to do for you in your life. Thank you. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right, church, we're going to pray this prayer together. Keep your eyes closed. Father, we thank you for your great love. Your word says that if we would say with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we would be saved. I do that now. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I believe He is alive. I choose to serve Him by surrendering every part of my life to Him today. Help me to know You more and live a life that pleases You. I thank You that as I've done this, I have chosen to follow Jesus daily. I am now saved. Heaven is my home. God is my Father. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let's give God a praise offering.